All right guys, Joe with Hunt Fish Shoot. It's early December. We just got the new Matthews V3 in. If you guys like this video, subscribe to the channel, ring that bell for notifications, and drop us a comment. Let us know what you think. Uh -huh. In my hands, I've got the new Matthews V3. This current model is in the new First Light Spectre pattern. Um, overall, I think the pattern's okay. I don't like as much as the Fusion pattern, but, so this is the 27 inch model of the V3. This bow is also gonna come in a 31 inch model. Um, I chose the 27 just because I like a compact bow. If I can, it's gonna fit great on a backpack. I do a lot of running gun whitetail hunting where I'm doing a lot of hanging hunts with my mobile setup and this bow is gonna fit that perfectly. So the biggest change on this bow from the Matthews VXR that they came out with last year, which I also had, I had the 28 inch version last year, is the main thing that they did that I can tell is gonna be your cable guard. They actually ran this cable guard basically at a 45 degree angle. That way it was able to get basically their idea behind it. Um, is it lines up perfectly with the burger hole, which is technically the center of the bow. And as you draw it back, it's supposed to make the draw cycle smoother. It's supposed to be a smoother shot. Um, I do think that they did do that. This bow is extremely smooth. Um, this model right here, I've got the 65 pound mods on it. These are the switch weight two cams. And basically the way these cams work are the same way that the VXR worked. You basically have one cam and you have a module that's gonna change your draw length your let off and also the draw weight of the bow. So right now I'm running the 65 pound mods at 28 and a half inches in the 85% module, which I actually do not like the 85% module and I'm gonna switch them to the 80%. But uh, overall, man, this bow is sweet. It is super quiet. I don't know if there's a quieter bow on the market. Uh, my other bow that I've had is, I've right now I'm shooting the PSE Carbon Air Mach 1 and truthfully between the two bows I actually think I still like my Mach 1 better just because of how light it is and I just seem to shoot that bow really well but this bow for a 27 inch bow it holds very well it's extremely quiet and it really kind of shoots like a longer bow <clears throat> so the bow is 27 inches axle to axle but if you take a look at the riser, the riser is actually almost 27 inches. So Matthew said this year, this is the longest riser that they've ever had on a bow in comparison to axle to axle length. And I'd have to agree. Um, they're dampening this bow with their new Nano 740 dampening system. As far as that goes, I'm not sure if it makes much of a difference compared to the harmonic dampers they've used in the past. But um, the bow is super smooth. So the other changes they made from the VXR, you take a look at the riser cutouts and they are a little bit different. Um, they just kind of changed the pattern in it, maybe made them stiffer. I really don't know exactly uh, what they did. So I believe you can get this bow in 60 pounds, 65, 75, and 80 pounds, I believe. And draw length wise, I'm not 100% sure. I believe it goes from 26, I believe maybe up to 30 uh, inches of draw length, but I don't, really think that anyone over a 30 inch draw length is going to be shooting this compact of a bow because of the string angle. Um, like I said, I'm shooting at 28 and a half and I've always found on the Matthews that they usually run about a half inch to an, about a half inch long. So I've actually ordered the ultra view grip for this bow that's supposed to be here anytime. And I actually think I'm going to put that on. Then I'm going to put the 29 inch module on it so I can get more speed out of the bow. Cause I think that uh, ultra view grip is going to shorten my draw length just a little bit, so I'm going to try that. Um, this bow's IBO and right at, I believe, 340 feet per second, and that's at 29 and a half inches and 70 pounds. So, standard IBO testing is at 70 pounds and 30 inches. So, they've actually IBO'd this at less than what they usually do. So, and the bow seems fast. Um, right now, I'm running the Spot Hog Fast Eddy on it with the Hamsky Drop Away and a Shrewd Raid Stabilizer. And if uh, anyone has any issues or think they're going to have any issues with the Hamsky rest, uh, the Hamsky rest fits just fine. Um, 
They also have the Matthews rest that attaches right to the riser, which I'm not shooting. All right, so this bow from the factory, um, they're specking it out at 4.29 pounds. And I just wanna give you guys a real live weight of when you have everything on it, what it's gonna be. So this bow is coming in 5.82 pounds. So that's not too bad. Uh, my carbon is coming in right at about five pounds with everything on it, uh, including your arrows. So it is gonna be a little bit heavier, but uh, the bow being as compact as it is, I think it's a big benefit of it. But uh, we're gonna get some test shots of this bow and uh, we're gonna shoot it through the chronograph and show you guys how it shoots. All right, I'm gonna run you guys through a few shots um, and just let you guys hear how quiet this bow is and just kind of run you through the draw cycle and see how it feels. Um, this bow right now, we're at 64 and a half pounds is what it read on my last chance scale. And uh, let me run you guys through this. So the bow draws pretty easy and it's just pretty smooth all the way back. There's no real humps in it. The, uh, the back wall is super solid. These are gonna be cable stops, which they never really ran limb stops anyway, so like some of the other bows out there, but um, I shoot a hinge release, so I do like a nice solid back wall. Um, one thing I will say about uh, the Matthews bows, as quiet as they are and as nice as they are, and they really are a work of art. You can tell they put a ton of detail in. They use the absolute junkiest strings I've ever seen on a bow. Um, you know, just from, just from right where the cable the cable stop hits, it's already wearing the serving. And I've got maybe 200 shots through this bow. Um, I usually run America's Best on everything, so I'm gonna peel these off and put America's Best on. But these strings, they've already, the peeps already been rotating. They're just not a very high quality string. So I really would like to see them put something different on there, but run you guys through another shot. So the bow, this bow, it is, it does draw smoother than the VXR. The VXR had a little bit of dump on the back end um, as it dumped into the valley, but this is pretty smooth all the way through. Just quiet and smooth. So now we're going to load up the chronograph and see what we're getting through the chronograph. All right, guys, we got the chronograph set up. Um, Again, I'm gonna run through the specs. Right now I'm shooting 64 and a half pounds at 28 and a half inches. Based on the module, I've not put on a uh, drawboard. Um, I'm shooting a 430 grain arrow on the dot. And uh, let's see what we get here. Two hundred and ninety feet per second, which is pretty good. We're gonna shoot another one. Again, this I this bow IBO is I believe at 340 to 342, I believe. Two ninety six, which it seems like a pretty big spread, but Right now we're standing about four to four and a half feet away from the chronograph. Two eighty nine, and we'll shoot one more. again so I don't know where the 296 came from um, but really you've got three arrows at two, 289 to 290 so really that's pretty good speeds um, out of a 60 basically a 65 pound bow at 28 and a half inches and I really think when I get uh, the 29 inch mods with the ultra view grip I can probably get that speed up to the 295 consistently and then maybe even uh, put some 70 pound mods on there and we'd probably be up over 300 feet per second with you know with the 430 grain arrow which is packing a lot of punch and it'll kill anything in north america 
So overall, though, this bow is sweet. Those are great speeds out of this bow. All right, guys, I know a lot of people are skeptical of a short axle-to-axle -axle bow because uh, back in the day, everything was long, and then we got shorter, and then we kind of went back to long, and now we're kind of back to some really short bows. Um, this 27 is going to be the shortest on the market. But uh, I think set up properly and really you work on your shot execution, you're fully capable of shots out to long distances for you Western hunters. Um, right now I've got a block set up at 50 yards and just kind of show you how capable this bow really is. Um, I haven't shot a ton with this bow and I haven't shot but a couple arrows today, um, which is not that uncommon in a hunting situation. So we're gonna draw back and, and try to hammer a couple at 50. Let's see how that one went. Is it low? And that's another thing. This peep keeps twisting. These strings are, are really bad. All right, guys, that's four arrows. I think my first one was a little bit low, but it's also pretty cold out and I haven't shot today. But I want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you guys like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, drop us a comment, and ring the bell for some more notifications on some further videos. Thanks for watching.